On October 19, 2008, officers were dispatched to the 3900 block of Hemlock Street in East Chicago. When they arrived, they found 23-year-old Javier Solis Jr. lying on the ground unresponsive. Here's the story. I was very young when I had Javier, and having him at 17 was really what motivated me to have hope in my life, you know, having him there. It was a hard time for her. As happy as she was, it was hard. The father was in his life for a little bit, like kind of back and forth, but she did mostly everything. And uh, we would take Havo with us, and he was like a little celebrity. We'd put him in the stroller and take him walking. And while she worked, she worked a lot when the boys were young. He was always um, a good kid. Javier was a good kid. He was a good brother a good cousin to my kids. Javier is a um, very lovable kid, always has been. Um, even as he got into his early teenage years, he um, still called me mommy, which was funny because all of my boys are over six feet tall. Watching them grow up was so fun. Like they were entertainment. <laughs> We'd all get together and let them entertain us. And then um, getting older, he, they started to sprout. Like, they were like six, two, six, three, all over six feet tall. And he started to get his little facial hair, and we'd just like tease him about his boys and girls. They were uh, typical older brothers. They, uh, they looked out for me and uh, beat me up a lot. <laughs> My mom would yell at them all the time. If um, my brother ever thought somebody was picking on me, he would uh, say something to them. I loved them a lot. Well, my son was living with his father. The weekend before, he called me and he said, Mom, can you come pick me up? You know, so I went and picked him up. He spent uh, four days with us at the house and uh, we barbecued and we just went to the movies and he was you know, talking about his future and getting married and and how many kids he was gonna have. He was gonna have five. And he was gonna name them all Havel. And we kinda I kinda said, What are you gonna name the girls? He said, Well, Havita, Havasita, and and he went on and on and we thought that was funny. But he said, Well, I'm gonna go back to my dad's and I'll be home. On October nineteenth, two thousand eight. Uh, officers were called to the 3900 block of Hemlock in reference to a shooting. The responding officer arrived uh, that afternoon around 4 p.m. What he saw when he got there was a male Latin uh, laying on his back who was later identified as Javier Solis Jr. There were two other guys that were actually uh, with him when he was shot. The house that they were at was the home of Mike Rojas and there was another young man there by the name of Claudio Martinez Jr. Uh, those three subjects were at Mike's house that day, helping his mother move some furniture around. The mom was warming up some food for the three guys. So they decided to go to the rear of the house. Mike gets up to go check to see if, see if the food is ready. And upon getting ready to leave, they hear some gunshots. Well, at this time, Mike jumps uh, into his house and closes the door. Um, Javier Solis jumps up and runs westbound through a uh, gangway. Claudio then follows Javier through the same gangway as these gunshots are going along. Well, as they get to the end of the gangway, Javier Solis collapses. At that same point in time, there was a young lady who was walking and go northbound on Hemlock from 140th. So as she's coming down the street, she hears gunshots and she finally sees a guy that runs in front of her. But she does see that he's a male Latin, bright skin, and he has a goatee, and he has a round face. Well, she kind of figures that she knows this guy, but he fired one more shot, and then he ran westbound through um, between two residents. At that time, she heard some people cry for help, so she went to go see what was going on. And as she got closer to the body, she found out the person that was lying there shot was her cousin, Javier Solis Jr. A male black subject uh, came up to this female named Jessica Solis and started administering CPR. 
to try to help save his life. So they stayed until the medics and the police got there. Um, the body was transfer later transferred to the hospital where he later died uh, on arrival. There was a elderly man who was in the alley uh, right after the shooting. And this elderly man says he sees a uh, kind of a stout kid wearing a black hoodie and blue jeans. He has a goatee, facial hair, and has a round face exiting between the houses. Well, a green Buick, a dark green Buick uh, with another guy and him along with some other individuals, they drove off eastbound uh, from, the, from the crime scene. Well, that car was later found to be a gang member by the name of Miggs, uh, Miguel Colon. Through information later, it was found that Miggs, he was the dr actual driver at the scene of the crime. I remember I was playing uh, video games the phone ring, and uh, it was my dad. He said, uh, let me talk to your mom. I said, she's in the shower. He said, tell her it's important. So I get on the phone, I'm like, hello, and he says, Havel has been shot. You have to get to the hospital. I remember she busted out of the bathroom. She said, uh, your brother's been shot. He's at the hospital, pray for him. And she ran out the door. I get out the car, and Julius and my husband were standing outside of the emergency room. And I said, where is my son? And nobody answered. Nobody answered me. Javier Solis and his boys, they were gang members at the time. None of the guys that were at the scene, including Claudio and Mike, they were at the hospital, along with other friends or gang members that was in Javier's uh, little, little clique. No one wanted to speak about the incident. They didn't want to help the police at all. And then the doctor comes in with a pastor. So he sat me down and he started to explain about Javier. And I looked over to my husband and I said, I can do a lot of things, but this I can't do. And he held my hand and I thought, okay, all I have to do is hold my son. That's all I have to do is hold him. I have to hold him. If I hold him, all the love that I hold in my heart for him will transfer over and he'll be okay. He'll live, he'll breathe, his heart will start beating. And I said, where is he? I have to hold him, where is he? And the police officer said, he's in this room and we have him here, but you can't touch him. Well, we have to process evidence. And he went on explaining, I heard nothing. All I knew is I could not hold my son. I'm trying to process this thing. So they take me to see my son bound, literally bound. So I wouldn't touch him. So I wouldn't hold him. <laughs> and I went in there alone. And when I saw him laying there, he looked like he was sleeping. And all I kept thinking is if God would allow me to give him my breath, to give him my heartbeat, but there was, I was helpless. I went to Jessica Solis's aunt's house on Drummond Street. She told me that she recognized who the person was. And she said, the guy looks like his name was Rolando Leal, who at one time was a friend of Javier Solis, but those two were having conflict at the time due to uh, Rolando uh, trying to be initiated into another game. Uh, she came down the next day. She uh, went through a photo lineup and she picked out Rolando Leal. At that time, uh, APP was put out for Rolando Leal to be picked up uh, for questioning. He actually came in himself, but he came in with a lawyer. And he gave an alibi that he was at a birthday party in Hobart, Indiana. And upon talking with Jessica later, uh, she kind of recanted a little bit and stated that she really didn't know if it was Rolando. So at that point in time, the investigation went on for months and finally it went to uh, cold status because we just didn't have enough to uh, bring Rolando in for the case. And they escorted me out of the hospital. And I remember standing outside and I was looking around. 
everything went dim. Everything was a shade darker. It's like the grass was not as green or the sky wasn't as blue. And I watched the cars go by and I thought, okay, everybody has to stop because Howell has not moved forward yet. So we have to hit pause and the world was not right anymore. With all the different things that had happened in his life, all the tragic things, all the mistakes he had made, he was just Havo to us. He was just Havo, and I never got to tell him that I had been praying for him, that I still thought about him, that I loved him, that in my eyes he was always a good kid. He was just a good kid. Thinking about my nephew that he's so close with, thinking if he was always in Havo's shadow, if he was always following his big brother, who is he now without having a shadow to fo follow. <laughs> How do I live another week? How do I live another year without seeing my son, without him calling my name, without him being there to ask me if I could make him the egg with the ball in it or him just sitting down watching TV you know, I close my eyes and I literally know what my son's toes look like, his knuckles, his earlobes, the birthmark he has on the back of his leg, the scar he has on his head, the way he wiggles his ears, his smile, the way he stands, the way he eats. And I literally can smell him. If I just close my eyes and be still long enough, he's still with me. To kind of hear the rumors is hard. To run into people is hard. Um, it's hard to be in East Chicago, but for someone to be charged, prosecuted, and to do time for the murder, would bring, I don't want to say peace, because it's hard to find that, uh, no matter what happens, no matter what the outcome is. For Havo, it would mean justice. For us as a family, it would bring peace. And nothing in this life is going to replace the void that we have. But at least there can be closure. All I ask is for you to put yourself in my shoes and how would they feel knowing that their child was not able to experience all that life had for them and to just have compassion with me, with my son, with our family and to do the right thing if, if for nothing else to do the right thing. If you have uh, any information about anything that can help it would be greatly appreciated and uh we just it would just help a lot